and you'll see some of the uh, features of the forest here that make it complete. As I mentioned earlier, uh, diversity in the forest is one of the key ingredients of a healthy forest, and that includes uh, healthy animal populations, fish populations, and bird populations, as well as healthy soil with microorganisms, because it's all really one ecological process, and uh, everything relies on everything else in the forest to be healthy. Um, here we can see uh, a bird nest on the branch of this maple tree. And um, a healthy forest will have a lot more birds than an unhealthy forest. And each of the animals fulfills a role in the forest. The birds spread the seeds for the new plants and trees. Uh, let's walk along a little. <coughs> There's several kinds of berries in the forest. This is a huckleberry bush here. You can see one little pink berry still left on the bush. Uh, that feeds wildlife, which in turn add nutrients to their waste to the forest floor. We can also see that in this forestry operation, they've left some down woody matter. Here's a a piece of wood that's slowly deteriorating and becoming part of the soil which will feed the trees that come later and these other small bushes. There are many small animals as well that live on the forest floor and inhabit nooks and crannies in logs like that and larger logs. Uh, those people who are still supporting the outmoded practice of clear cutting often tell us that young trees will not live in, in a selectively harvested forest here in Western Oregon. Uh, we can see that isn't true. Here's a couple small trees doing just fine coming up in between the larger trees that have been left here in the woods. We can also see the, the light coming through. And if you look up at the tops of the trees, you'll see that there is a spacing between the trees to allow the branches and leaves of those trees to receive enough light to thrive higher up. Uh, by selectively thinning the forest, it allows those trees to branch out even more and to uh, grow even faster. And uh, they call that releasing the tree when it's thinned in that manner. we go up to the top of the thing cut. We're at the boundary of Gil Harrison's property and uh, the Kintai's property here next door. Uh, Gil has his 20 acres selectively cut. You can see it's a beautiful forest. He's getting lots of wood products out of it by periodic thinning of the forest. Over here on Bob Kintai's side, they clear cut this whole 10 acre strip. Um, the only advantage is we can see the hillside more clearly. But aside from that, uh, we're not going to be able to get any kind of wood products out of this land for at least another 50 or 60 years. Um, you can see it's, part of it's been replanted with some small fir trees. Mostly a monoculture tree plantation is what it looks like they're trying for. But one of the problems you run into with a clear cut when you've replanted is you get invasive vegetation, blackberry, scotch broom, other type of vegetation that competes with the trees and makes it difficult to uh, have any use in this land. You can barely walk through this kind of uh, land here and this vegetation. Um, and what it also does is it results in land users and landowners resorting to poisonous chemical sprays for herbicides to get rid of some of this competing vegetation which further destroys the soil content. 
Um, what I'd like to do is take a look at a comparison of what the ground of the forest looks like here. You can see the, the native mosses, that's salal, which is a berry producing shrub. And uh, there's a few mushrooms scattered through the forest here. You can see the white snowberries and all the ferns. And uh, in addition to being more passable for humans and wildlife to walk through, um, this is healthier for growing trees because the soil has not been burned from slash burning or poisoned by chemical pesticides and herbicides. As you can see in the selectively cut part here, uh, we have young trees coming in, trees of different ages, and uh, there's also more diversity as far as the types of trees. We see some oak in this forest and a little bit of cedar. Um, with the ecological forestry, we don't need to replant hardly at all because the trees that are standing drop seeds that become the new trees. You can see some small trees right at the base of this tree here. This area over here where we, they had clear cut about 10 years ago, they had to spend much time and money replanting the new trees because there were no seed trees to drop the seeds for the new stock. So it's much more efficient and inexpensive in that regard to use selective cutting and ecological forestry. For our gardeners in the audience, you'll appreciate how healthy the soil is here. This is the hummus. You know, there are many microscopic organisms in here that are breaking down the soil and making it more easy for the trees to absorb the minerals. But uh, if you go into a clear cut, you're going to look at a bunch of mud because a lot of the soil has been compressed and a lot of the uh, microorganisms have been burned through the slash burning. But this is real healthy soil from the decaying wood, woody matter. <laughs> 